Martha Beck, The Way of Integrity, Finding the Path to Your True Self. So many of the things that cause us to suffer psychologically, people-pleasing, negative habits, or staying in flat relationships, result from being out of touch with ourselves. So what's the obvious cure? Integrity. Inspired by the Divine Comedy, use Dante's framework to break down the path to achieving personal integrity into clear, actionable steps. With tried-and-true techniques, they'll help you uncover what integrity looks like for you. You'll become attuned to the internal signals that can illuminate what you actually want versus what society is selling you, and in the process, reach a place of genuine joy. Think about your life. Maybe you have an okay job, okay relationships, and an okay sense of purpose. So maybe your life isn't perfect, but whose is? Honestly, you're fine. Now think about how you feel. Does a sense of anxiety, discomfort, or disappointment lurk in your mind? Maybe you tend to dwell on things that didn't work out or doubt that future dreams will ever come true. Emotionally, you might feel sad, grumpy, or numb. Physically, you have no energy. And mentally, you can't seem to focus. Still, honestly, you're fine. But are you really? And what if, for that matter, fine isn't enough? Maybe you suspect there's more out there. More love, more meaning, more happiness. This is where integrity comes in. The key message here is, integrity means being at one with your deepest, truest self, and it's the antidote to suffering. Today's use of the word integrity has taken on a somewhat judgmental tone, but it just means intact, from the Latin integer. Being in integrity means being whole and undivided. When a plane has integrity, Its many parts work together to make it glide smoothly through the sky. But if it loses integrity, it could stall or crash. That's not about judgment, just physics. It's the same in everyday life. To satisfy social standards, you may often ignore or negate your true feelings, becoming unhappy, unproductive, and sick in the process. When you act in ways that don't resonate at your deepest level, you suffer because you're out of sync with yourself. In other words, you're out of integrity. Conversely, when your body, mind, heart, and soul are totally aligned, your daily work absorbs you. You love being around your friends, and you experience the most refreshing sleep. Waking up is wonderful because you can't wait to experience the day ahead. Life, like the intact plane, is smooth sailing. Maybe you're rolling your eyes right now and thinking, this is a lot of flapdoodle. But maybe you're also wondering whether such a fulfilling life could exist. And maybe you'd like to discover these levels of joy and purpose. These blinks reveal a way out of suffering that traces Dante's journey through the stages of The Divine Comedy, a work the author considers a powerful set of instructions for healing psychological wounds and restoring integrity. First up, the dark wood of error. Midway through the journey of our life, begins Dante, I found myself in a dark forest, for the right way was lost. Like Dante, you may suddenly be feeling alone and adrift, and you may not know exactly what's wrong or how you ended up here. What society tells us is right often misaligns with our true natures, and the dark wood of error is Dante's metaphor for the inner fog that results from this dichotomy. The first step in realigning yourself, 
in pursuing the way of integrity is to acknowledge how lost you are. In doing so, you'll probably encounter some challenging beasts or emotional states. A ravenous leopard, that's neediness. A terrifying lion, that's panic. Or a sorrowful wolf, that's depression. You might also take some wrong turns, as Dante did when he attempted to climb Mount Delectable, an enticing but destructive path driven by social comparisons only to be chased back down by the beasts. Luckily, a little guidance will help you chart your true course. The key message here is, to escape the dark wood of error, acknowledge your lost, and follow your inner teacher. As Dante runs down Mount Delectable, he sees the ghost of poet Virgil emerging from the trees. This is his soul guide here to lead him out of his sleepwalking state. Your own soul guide may appear in a book or podcast or maybe through therapy or yoga. Expect a new perspective and some tough love. In Eastern traditions, spiritual teachers often use cold water and bamboo sticks to shock their disciples awake. The guide's goal is not to help you get comfortable in your illusions. It's to set you free. But this outer teacher is just the beginning. To really learn, go within. Your inner teacher is your integrity. It will guide you both physically and mentally. In response to hearing or speaking the truth, your body will instinctively relax and your mind will feel free. Listening to this part of yourself is the most important skill you need to attain true happiness. To reach this state, Virgil first takes Dante to a gate inscribed with the phrase, Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. In other words, abandon the cowardice that has kept you from acknowledging truths you've been too afraid to see. One way to do this is to focus your attention on the present moment and trust that everything's okay, just as it is. If you repeatedly do this in the face of fear or adversity, you'll discover that part of you, pure integrity, is always able to cope. As he passes through the gate, Dante enters into a hellish abyss of sinners, performing various punishments. This is the inferno. We all have an internal inferno, a place of psychological suffering which results from being split within ourselves. But suffering is optional. Pain comes from events, while suffering comes from the way you handle events. Popular psychology often claims that positive thoughts make you happy while negative thoughts do the opposite. But a forced, cheery statement, I love my job, can feel like a dagger to the heart. Meanwhile, a negative sentiment that matches what you truly believe, my job sucks, provides sweet relief. The key message here is, in the inferno, identify the parts of you that are suffering and set them free. Throughout the inferno, Virgil urges Dante to do three things. Observe the demons, question them, and move on. That is, identify the beliefs that make you suffer and ask yourself, can I absolutely know this thought is true? Whenever your inner teacher realizes you're mistaken, let the rigid conviction go and replace it with openness. Letting go of beliefs is scary, and others might not like your newfound freedom. Don't worry, this means you're on the right track. It's tempting to go into attack mode in the face of judgment, be it your own or that of others. But don't give in to your lizard brain. Focus instead on creating positive solutions. Read a book to learn more, or plant a tree. You could also concentrate on your true values, which research shows 
can reduce stress and make hard-to-hear information easier to digest. In the deepest circles of hell, Dante encounters the worst sinners of all. Liars. Lying, like the tiny but deadly mosquito, is treacherous because it's so common and nearly invisible. All lies, whether well or ill-intended, wreak havoc. For Dante, deception is like being frozen into ice. When you lie to yourself, nothing feels trustworthy because you aren't trustworthy. Life becomes cold, lonely, and numb. At the bottom of the inferno, a giant monster, Lucifer, thrashes at the center of a frozen lake. To Dante's horror, Virgil tells him to head toward it. They descend onto Lucifer's body and then down through the surface of the ice. They keep going. But now, suddenly, they're climbing. Passing the center of Earth means connecting with the core lie. I'm alone. But by going deeper into your suffering, you will, at some point, stop descending and start ascending. This is the end of self-betrayal, the point at which you stop believing things onto yourself and accept that you're infinitely worthy, lovable, and loved. Dante and Virgil emerge from the inferno at daybreak. In Dante's words, So we came forth and again beheld the stars. They're at the base of a giant mountain, the exact inverse of the inferno. This is purgatory, which means cleansing, a place where repentant souls purify themselves through various tasks up the mountain until they reach heaven. Maybe your new ways of thinking are already lessening your inner torment. Now it's time to walk the walk. The inferno ended at self-betrayal, so that's where your first steps up purgatory begin. Specifically. Stop lying. This practice seems simple, but it's the ultimate self-help strategy on your path to happiness. The key message here is, to pass through purgatory, align your external behavior with your newfound inner truth. Dante arrives at another gate, this time guarded by an angel who tells him he may only pass if he agrees to never look back. In other words, Commit to living your truth. Begin shifting not just your thoughts, but every word and action to align with integrity. This could mean you stop laughing at a co-worker's crude jokes, or, as the author did, leave the Mormon church and come out as gay. As you approach a fundamental shift in your identity, you may find you miss your old life. Give yourself time and space to mourn, and then forge ahead. Next, learn to deal with violent people and aspects of yourself. Reacting to injustice and hatred with justice and compassion is difficult, so it's crucial to acknowledge that you're always capable of choosing your responses. Your ultimate freedom lies in your capacity to interpret the world in new ways. For example, turn your view of life as a drama triangle in which there are only three possible roles, victim, persecutor, and rescuer, on its head. In this new empowerment dynamic, people once seen as persecutors become challengers, rescuers become coaches, and victims become creators. At this stage, you know what you truly know, feel what you truly feel, say what you truly mean, and are trying to do what you truly want. Research shows that the more you repeat an action, the more you wire it into your neural circuits. To change socialized behavior patterns that don't ring true to you, perform DIY brain surgery by deliberately choosing and repeating new actions you'll begin to see that practice makes permanent. 
rather than try to pull off one grandiose gesture, move toward your ideal life through a series of one-degree turns. By continually spending a little more time on things you love and a little less time on things you don't, you'll slowly but surely align with your inner integrity. Three things occur as Dante reaches the pinnacle of purgatory. First, he finds himself in a beautiful forest, the Garden of Eden. Second, he meets his old flame Beatrice, who commands him to stop acting like one who dreams. Third, he's dunked in two rivers. The first makes him forget all his wrongdoing, while the second reminds him of everything he's ever done right. Dante emerges from the clear water wide awake and in total integrity. And like the intact airplane, he can fly, literally. He effortlessly glides up to paradise and takes his place among the stars. The key message here is, as your inner and outer lives approach complete integrity, you'll reach paradise. You may not have magical rivers at your disposal, but you can still reclaim your innocence and reach your own inner paradise. First, forgive yourself for ever betraying your integrity. Then acknowledge and value everything you've done to support your sense of truth. Like with repeated action, persistent contemplation can turn a transitory state of connectedness and love into a permanent structural condition. By focusing on integrity and compassion, you can rewire yourself for happiness. In getting closer to your truth, you'll begin having moments of satori, Japanese for sudden enlightenment, where the whole world seems to change. A few people, like the Buddha or Jesus, have experienced enlightenment as a giant, pivotal event. But it's more likely that many smaller increments of awakening will gradually compose your new worldview. During his ascension, Dante has two sudden realizations. The entire universe is one entity, and everything is driven by love. In knowing we are all one, you can imagine your existence as a fractal, a microcosm of the exact shape of the universe. The shape of your life, your words and actions, affects the shapes of people and environments around you. And as your shape changes, so do theirs. Maybe, after listening to these blinks, you'll admit what you actually need to be happy. First to yourself, then to a loved one. This could be your springboard to act more assertively at work, which in turn could create more openness among your colleagues. Each time you release an error and begin living according to your integrity, you scrub the dirt off another facet of yourself. You shine more brilliantly and absorb more beauty from the universe. At some point, you'll realize, like Dante did, that everything is driven by love. And as you reach the highest level of integrity, your sense of unity and love will draw you toward helping others. It may sound cheesy, but it's true. You'll become the change you wish to see in the world. Unhappiness results from trying to diligently embody social norms and beliefs that don't align with your true nature. The antidote is to cultivate integrity and realign all aspects of your being. By following the way of integrity, which parallels Dante's journey from the dark wood of error to the inferno, purgatory, and finally paradise, you will release your suffering and reach a place of freedom, and with it, your full expression of connection, love, and happiness. And here's some actionable advice. Do an integrity cleanse. Lying and keeping secrets has been linked to heart disease and cancer, as well as myriad emotional symptoms like depression, anxiety, and hostility. So save yourself. 
make a resolution not to tell a single lie for the next full calendar year, or at least a week. Keep a journal to document what happens once you stop lying. You may experience health benefits and improved relationships, like a group of subjects who stopped or tried to stop lying for 10 weeks did. And if you do lie, don't give up on your cleanse. Just forgive yourself and recommit to not lying until the challenge is over.